Imagine you're in this scenario. You're one hour before your very next game, and you know your opponent is a die-hard Karakon fan. Now, unfortunately for you, you haven't played many of Karakon games before, and you don't know any good lines against it. And you only have one hour before the next game. So you have two options. You could just go into the game blind and just hope for the best. Or number two, you could try to learn an entire variation or entire opening in less than an hour. I know that second option might seem hard, but I can show you how I do this in many of my own games coming straight up. Now before we begin, I want to address the elephant in the room. Today's strategy that I'm teaching you today will of course work better if you use more time, you put in more practice into your opening. The only reason why I'm teaching you how to do it in less than an hour is in, in case you don't have that time and you can't put in as much effort as you would want to before your next game. The following five steps I'll be teaching you guys, I can guarantee will be useful to all of you guys, as even at my level, even against players who are like much higher rated than me, similar rated, or even titled players, I've been able to do so well and have been able to play an opening that I only prepared for an hour, even against the most experienced of players. So the first step of a five step process is the easiest one. We just have to log on to chess.com or Lee Chess and then go onto this the tool section and then go on to explore. I know contrary to popular belief or what seems to be the most logical thing in which we would go on to openings, I find that openings on chess.com and leeches aren't necessarily very useful unless you're just trying to learn the names of different openings. However, since we're chess players and not really chess historians or explorers, we don't really care about the names, but more so the moves and ideas behind, which is why chess explorer is much, much more useful. So step two of our five step process is finding a checkpoint that we want to focus on. So what do I mean by checkpoint? So obviously when we're looking at an opening, we don't mean like every single opening in the world, right? Obviously we're not calculating both E5, E6, C5, C6, D6, we're not learning everything at once. We're looking at one specific opening. So let's say for example, we're gonna use a real life example that I used against somebody who I knew was going to play the Karakon against me. So I knew my opponent was playing Karakon. So I was looking through the opening and I said, okay, so I know this, I know up to now, this is all very normal stuff. And so here I'm looking at everything on the right side and I realized, wow, this F3 move looks very weird. It looks very wonky. And my opponent probably doesn't know how to play against this since it's not very, very normal. So this will be my checkpoint because I realized I want to play pawn F3. Your checkpoint should always be on your move that you choose that you want to play. So in this case, it's F3. And the reason why that's important is because you can't really control what your opponent's going to do. Now, of course, since I know my opponent's a Karakon player, C6 and D5 are kind of mandatory unless he wants to get into a bad position. So therefore, we're going to play pawn F3. So this is our checkpoint, and this is step number two. Now that we have our checkpoint, here comes the difficult part of actually learning our new opening. So when we look at this, we see that there's so many different options our opponent can play. They can play pawn e6, d takes e4, g6, queen b6, e5, knight f6, knight d7. There's so many different moves that, uh, that your opponent can make. And after that, there's so many different moves that they can make. But something you guys need to understand from this video and for the future is that there's not actually that many different positions that can arise. And since we're just beginner slash intermediate players, we don't really care about the specific move order or anything. For example, if I'm going down this, I can see that, okay, let's say E6 is a variation and I'm just scrolling down this, right? This is what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to be scrolling down everything. I'm going to see what type of position this arises into. And I see, wow, so this in this type of position, I'm going to be castling queenside and I'm going to go for an E4, F3, H4, maybe a G4, G5, H4, H6 advance. So we're going to go for a pawn storm. So knowing that, I'm going to write down in my, that in my notebook, and which is step number four, which is basically write down the ideas and figure out the plans that we're going to make in the position in the opening that we're going to learn. So this is saying that after pawn e6, we should strive to maybe try to castle to the queen side immediately, right? I might write down we want to play queen to d3, bishop to f4, maybe write these things down, and I have a basic gist of this opening. I see that my bishop on f1 usually doesn't move, so we literally just move up and we just do a typical pawn storm. So basically we got the gist of an opening, we know it quite well, and especially since this opening is not very common, and queenside castling isn't that common in the Karakon, 
in which you go for pawn storm on the other side, you could catch your opponent off out of aware. Now, let's say your opponent doesn't play e6. This is an e6 variation. So let's go on to the next variation from our checkpoint again, which is d takes e4. So let's see what our opponent can do after this. So e5, this seems to be a critical variation in which our opponent sacrifices a pawn. Now, we have to see why this doesn't work. Let's see why this doesn't work. Hmm, it seems to me this position doesn't seem very good. I don't really want to play a position in which my king is out on d3, so we don't really have to calculate this. So in this variation, I recommend that if your opponent plays e5, just play the co top common move. Bishop g4 seems the most menacing. If something like this happens, then you play bishop c4. Like this is just some normal stuff over here. Knight g5, going for some forks and skewers, captures, captures, and e5. All right. So this is a technical variation you might want to check down in your notebook, right? And in case your opponent plays e5, you play knight f3, he captures. Then you play bishop c4 with the idea of knight g5, castling, and just attacking that f7 pawn a lot. But Bishop g4 seems to be the more menacing variation, and in this variation, it seems to me you just develop normally still. You just develop normally, you play c3 to support your d4 pawn, and you don't really need to care about this e4 pawn. Let's see what happens if he decides to capture here. It seems to me there's no variation here, and the reason why is quite simple. You guys can see that there's a bishop takes f7 check after king captures, you even have this double check over here, which is super deadly because then you can win this bishop, so obviously that's not good for our opponent. So we know that we have these tricks in our, up our sleeve, which we would write down in a notebook of ours, right? Have a handy dandy notebook on your side when you're learning an opening in less than an hour. So after e5, so all right, that's that's fine. So this knight f3. So what if he plays something else? Let's say he plays, I don't know, after this. Let's say he plays instead, I don't know, queen b6 seems to be a common variation. And then after this, wait a second, it seems to me that this variation seems very technical. And if it's a technical variation, we actually need to memorize it and understand it. So in this variation, we can't really move our knight because if we move the knight, there's actually like bad things happening on f2. So this knight a4 idea is very, very important to know. With the c3 idea following up, defending here and threatening pawn b4. And we, we just have to calculate this stuff, right? This, and so up to now, this is fine. Up to now, this bishop d3. And we just play a normal game from here. So we know we're not in trouble. So as you guys can see, we're already going through a couple variations very quickly. But since we're writing them all down, we should know, uh, we should uh, have a basic general idea if any of these variations come up. So it seems to me, in terms of this opening that we just learned, there seems to be a couple critical positions that we need to understand. So these critical positions, again, are things that we want to write down in our notebook so we can understand. So one of them is if our opponent just plays something boring, for example, e6, then what we're going to try to do is try to castle on the queen side, right? We're going to castle on the queen side and do a pawn storm. So that's if our opponent tries to play normally with a move like pawn e6 and doesn't try to do anything threatening against us, then we're able to have the luxury of castling queen side. But let's say he doesn't. Let's say your opponent decides to take on e5, e4, right? And after e4, this leads to some complicated variations, right? In which they play pawn e5. Now, let's say they don't play pawn e5. Let's say they play pawn e6. Then we realize, hey, there's not really much to analyze here. There's no need because we just have a good position after a move like knight f3, right? We have a center. We have more development. There's nothing much we need to look at, right? So e5 is the most pressing issue, which we see knight f3. We saw that after capturing here, which is our second critical position, we need to actually, you know, go for ideas that attack f7. But if he plays bishop g4, which is our third critical position that we write down, we ignore it and we play bishop c4 ideas though, right? Which means that there's only like three main critical positions that we already see so far, which means we want to look at uh, the fourth critical variation here, which is after, cap uh, after not capture, is queen b6, and a knight c3, and we just go for this idea after e5. Instead of capturing, we play knight f3, defending our pawn, and then after e takes d4, our knight takes d4, and bishop c5, it's very important that we know what to do after this point, because if we move our knight, we're in a lot of danger. So we're going to play knight a4, attacking the opponent's queen, attacking the bishop, which gets us out of the problem, because if he captures here, we can capture this queen on b6, queen a5 check, and c3. And then we again just have a normal game at this point, in which we have a lot of space on the queen side, and we're going to be focused on attacking here. And we can just check a different game, like just check a random game about what happens. Now this game sure white lost, but it's probably not due to the opening. So let's go through it very quickly and see what ideas and plans this guy went for. So it seems to me that he went for actually a kingside attack that seemed very deadly. So 
he went for this. And so it's a crazy game, it seems, that in which he sacrifices his queen. So we can use this game as inspiration for our own plans during our own games. So let's do a recap, basically. Let's do a recap. So again, everything that I just said right now works for any opening. But the important things that you want to do is go into Game Explorer so you guys can see Grandmaster games, master level players play against each other and see what their ideas and plans are and what the most common moves are. Because if it's good enough for someone like Magnus Carlsen, then I can assure you it's good enough. For you so the second thing we want to do is find a critical point so here for us in this variation this fantasy variation of the Karakon is our critical point because it's the variation we want to study so after this all we did is click through for step three just a couple of different moves that we want to look at and look for critical positions and step number four was write down the critical positions and the critical ideas and plans in our notebook so that we can get them done so we understand them very, very fast. And as you guys can see uh, through this video, you know, this video is only uh, like 15 minutes-ish long, right? So we basically went through an entire variation, entire opening in less than 15 minutes while getting so much knowledge, so many ideas that we wouldn't have otherwise known if we hadn't gone through this, right? So, and our final step, of course, is basically remembering everything. This is very important. It doesn't matter if you just skim through and you speed run through everything, right? If you just click, 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 click so fast, right? that you don't remember anything, that's not important. Instead, we just want to look through critical positions and get to a point in which we're com comfortable with the position and we know what we have to do. So hopefully this video has been useful to all of you guys and hopefully you guys can study your openings in less than one hour now. If you guys want to check out a video in which I teach you how to think of middle game ideas and plans and finding the best move in any position, check out that video over there. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.